Hello and welcome to the studio, it's Finn Jelly and today we're going to be painting along with Portrait Artist of the Week and here is the still that I managed to snatch from the screenshot of the programme. Um, I had to take a lot of screenshots before I was happy with finding one that I could possibly work from. The thing about working from a live programme <coughs> is that the programme makers want it to be entertaining and so the there are lots of cuts away from the person that you're trying to paint uh, to the artist who's painting her and there's lots of talking going on and it's very distracting really um, but lots of people seem to manage and eventually I managed to take probably about 100 screenshots which I took time to winnow down to about three and then decided that this one was the most representational of what I felt represented Danny's face um, and flattered her to a certain extent as well. Um, she's got an amazing face and she has many expressions, some of which look very sympathetic or very heartfelt in expression and she has quite a few sides to her. Anyway, uh, visually that is at least, I don't know her personally. Um, so I started in watercolour because um, I've been doing a lot of watercolour portraits recently and uh, I soon bombed on that. It, it just did not take somehow. Um, I was struggling with the darks because I think that the paper I was using wasn't really up to managing those darks um, and neither was I at that moment. I had a week away from painting and so it was quite difficult to uh, get back into it. So rather than scrap it I thought well I'll get the acrylics out and uh, work over the top of it which is always quite tricky to do and I tend to go quite dark with acrylics um, <clears throat> so I worked quite dark and lost the drawing quite a bit as well. So as you can see at this stage of the time lapse I'm kind of really feeling around to try and develop things and it's just about this stage when the drawing is beginning to creep back into some kind of sense of what she actually looked like. There are certain major faults at the moment which I'm aware of as I'm painting but it doesn't really matter, I just know I'll get to them, like the eyebrows are too small and they're not in the right position and um, various parts of the form and it's not right. But I'm trying to all the time develop the sense of light and I think one of the problems with the um, Skype Portrait Artist of the Week is that the sitters are in their own home, they're talking, they haven't got any special lighting or particularly um, any special circumstances at all so often the lighting can be quite dull and they're moving about quite a lot so when they might shoot for uh, when they might stop at a position that you want to photograph the light may not be good on them at all then you've got the blurring that takes effect but luckily there are some apps that you can get to enhance photographs which is what I ended up doing um, so there's quite a lot to battle with uh, but essentially still you're working from a photo so having realised I'd got it too dark, I decided I would rework the whole thing again in a second painting of it and trying to lighten it up. But working against the white of the paper, which is often your friend when you're working with watercolour, um, it can be your enemy when you're working in oil or acrylics. And uh, as you can see, it's still very dark compared with the white of the paper. So I'm lightening it up and I'm working in, in sort of blocked in areas on top of the painting that I'd already um, hammered out. So I lost a lot of it again but because I'd worked over and over it for a couple of hours I was kind of familiar with what I needed to do. <clears throat> Every so often I would take it off the easel and put it up next to the photograph and have a comparing session which is really important to do because then you start to realise maybe the mouth isn't quite wide enough and <clears throat> the light on the nose is making it look a bit wonky and really there's quite a lot of modelling still to do. <clears throat> so once you get to a certain stage it's hard to be objective unless you keep standing back and of course you don't feel like doing that always but you have to. So it's starting to um, develop the likeness again at this stage and um, not that I ever fully had it anyway but I think it was starting to come back so it's just a question of pulling and pushing those subtle areas the slightest line or adjustment to any of the features can really make a massive difference to 
the essential characterization of a face. So, also, you, you don't want it to be uh, slavishly copied. So, here's the final thing. I think it worked okay in the end. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, hope there will be more coming along fairly soon.